Welcome back to Local SEO Tactics, where we bring you tips and tricks to help you get your business found online. Uh, joined by Rob Brennan again in this episode. You know, I did that backwards too. First, I should say, I'm your host, Jesse Dolan, joined by Bob Brennan again in this episode. Um, doing a virtual Zoom meeting again here. Uh, so thanks for being on this one again, Bob. It is good to keep seeing your face instead of doing these solo. It's a lot, I, I gotta say too, it's a lot different doing it with you again. Like uh, I talk slower, things are more engaging and uh, I just think these these episodes um, can turn out a lot better when we're both on it. So yeah, thanks for doing the technological Zoom thing here. No so problem. This week, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No problem. It's just, uh, it's when we do it the other way, the camera's kind of, we're both facing the camera, so we're kind of beside each other. We're yeah. now we're like directly, you know, looking at each other. So it's, it is, it's better this way. If we can do it this way going yeah. forward, it wouldn't be a bad idea. So. No, I don't, I don't mind it one bit once we, once we got it up and running here. So, um, so this week on topic here, uh, what we're going to be talking about is something a little bit more directly SEO related than the past few episodes. Um, we're still in the context of the coronavirus slash COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we're not going to get rid of that here anytime soon. Um, so this topic is going to walk a little bit more SEO uh, than the previous ones, but definitely on point here with the pandemic. Um, before we get into that, I want to mention, as we always do, our free instant SEO audits. If you haven't taken advantage of that yet, go on out to our website, localseotactics.com. It's totally free. Uh, it's real quick. You just input your web page, your email address, um, and the keyword you want to audit your website against. And it's going to give you a quick punch list of everything that's good and bad happening on your website um, as it relates to that keyword for optimization. Um, super slick. Uh, if you have any questions right now, if you're wondering, is my website um, optimized for this keyword? You know, is there anything I need to do? Uh, whether you're a marketer, whether you're a business owner, or you can barely even get to localseotactics.com. Go in there, click on the yellow button, free instant SEO audit, plug in your website, and um, it's going to spit you back a report that's super useful. Um, we get tons of great feedback uh, with that. So make sure you check that out. Um, this week's topic here, what we're going to be talking about is getting backlinks. So um, in the previous episode, um, you know, Bob was mentioning how everybody's got, well, I shouldn't say everybody. Um, not everybody's in the same boat here right now. Uh, some people are working 10, 12 hours a day and, you know, being uh, the teacher, being the cook, everything else. Uh, so I don't mean to, to uh, be short-sighted on that. But in business, um, hopefully there's some people on your team right now that do have some extra capacity if they're working from home. Um, and if not, if, if part of your job is focusing on SEO, you know, this is something you can directly do yourself. Um, what we're going to be talking about here is how to take some of this time and build some backlinks uh, for your website, for your web pages, and for your business. Because um, there's really two main buckets to get a little technical on SEO here. There's two main buckets to kind of um, move the needle in, in SEO. Uh, one is on page, which is doing stuff to your website or to your Google My Business even um, to kind of lump that in there um, for optimizing for keywords, for content creation and, and for all that stuff. Uh, but then there's off page, which is things that are not on your website. Uh, one of the big off page uh, items for SEO is getting a backlink from another website. Uh, Google has tried over the last couple of years to change their algorithm, uh, leverage their machine learning and artificial intelligence to not rely so much on the backlinks as part of their, their formula to how to rank and present websites. But um, that's just at this point, at least, um, too, too uh, hard-coded, for lack of a better phrase, uh, into the DNA of their search algorithm. It's kind of where it all started back in the day um, is with this backlinking. And essentially how that works is if you can envision your website sitting there uh, all by itself out there on the World Wide Web, if another website, if my website links to yours, if I say, hey, check out this great website over here, and I put a link to my website that brings people to yours, um, when Google sees that, they say, hey, this website must have some kind of authority or some kind of popularity or some kind of information uh, that's relevant because this other website is telling people to go from here to there. Uh, so there must be a reason for that. And kind of in its most basic terms, that's what a backlink does. And that's why a backlink has value in the eyes of Google. It's a, it's a way to gauge popularity, to gauge relevance, to gain, uh, gauge authority. Um, and it's just too good of a method uh, for them to get rid of. So this isn't going to go away anytime soon. It's been around since the beginning of Google. It's kind of what they're built on. And uh, there's something we can do right now with the current pandemic going on to take advantage of the situation and the opportunity presented um, 
and and get some backlinks. So something that's a little unique right now and specifically what we're talking about here is uh, local media outlets. They right now are very much a hub. I don't know about you, Bob, uh, but I know uh, my family, we're tuned into the news. I mean, sometimes we just have to turn it off and take a break, yeah. obviously, right? Yeah. But we are tuned into the news more than we have been, you know, in recent memory. Um, and that news can be, you know, uh, t television, can be radio, can be print, could be Facebook, right? Um, so with that, uh, media at large and news at large um, realize this. And something that they're putting together uh, in pretty much every organization is some kind of a portal for you to communicate that you're open or services you provide. Um, and I don't mean to spin this like media is taking advantage uh, because part of what they do is to be a public service. So they very much want to be able to have a list of, of restaurants that are open, let's say. Um, but also they're not naive to the fact that they know if they can be a spot where people will come to find those restaurants, that they get more traction to their website or to their channel or to their newspaper or whatever it is, uh, which helps their business model, right? Um, which is fine. They're, they're, that's completely fine to do, at least in my opinion. But what's interesting for us as business owners and marketers is they want us to list on them now where before maybe it had to be something that we'd pay for, you know, or maybe it's something that there was a big gatekeeper on uh, that you would have to really jump through a lot of hoops to get listed. Now it's pretty much, Hey, if you're open, um, tell us and we'll, we'll put you on our website or put you in our publication or, or things like that. So that's the kind of the topic that we're going to dive into here today. Um, it's going to be a, a shorter episode because um, it's going to be pretty much single focused on this, or at least the intent is that it's going to be shorter. Uh, but we're going to dive through, uh, dive into this and go through some of the scenarios um, on how you can take advantage of that. So, uh, okay, let me just grab the right list here. Uh, so first things first is uh, your local media um, and television outlets, broadcast television. So I, I doubt you could do this with a, what, like a, cnn.com or fox news or, or things like that um, but in your market i'm sure you have one if not three or four more um, local news stations that have a website and you're going to have to all these things we're going to go through you're going to have to search and find them out obviously for your your own locale um, and what's relevant but most of them are going to have right now if you go to their website something in their top menu maybe something that says you know the general tab of coronavirus or public information or open for business they all can, you know, call it whatever they want to call it. But all of the ones we've explored so far for our own business and for any customers that we work with, um, we've been able to find this without any problem um, on every website. And what you're going to want to look for is, depending on your business and your industry, um, what it is uh, that they're, depends on they're configuring their board, I guess what I'm trying to say. Some of them might have a certain um, posting board for restaurants that have curbside pickup. And maybe they have a map where they've got them all listed. Uh, maybe they have another one for general businesses that are open or for business updates, whatever it may be. Um, you want to find those, you want to list on as many as possible and take advantage of that. Um, Bob, chime in if I miss anything here, but I'm going to run down some types of publications that we've been finding these on. Uh, you've got television, you've got radio, radio stations, uh, you've got newspapers, uh, like actual print newspapers. They all have their online version. Yeah. You've got just straight up online publications that don't have any kind of a print media. Uh, we've got magazines and last but not least um, other local businesses and groups. So most what I'm, of what I'm what I'm, about, if yeah. I can throw this out, Jess, what I'm in, you and I haven't really discussed this. So this is kind of getting thrown in your, <laughs> your lap, but basically yeah. um, what I'd like to start looking and exploring into is, is local podcast. So, um, we're, I'm listening to a handful of podcasts that they used to actually be radio shows. Um, and for whatever reason, the radio station said, okay, and they were sponsored radio shows, right? Sure. So it isn't, you know, there's two types of radio shows. People don't really realize this. Most of your like radio shows on the weekend that are uh, how to invest your money are actually funded by um the sponsors yep. you know so it, it sounds the show itself sounds altruistic in terms of they're trying to help you in investment but it's 100 percent funded by let's just say charles schwab or somebody 
yeah. and it's not a a program that's really part of the radio station. Does that make sense? You, you yeah. gotta know this. They you you buy a slot, yep, and you get to talk about home improvement. Let's say you're uh, uh, you're gonna talk about home improvement, and it's actually the people buying that slot are the um, contractors for Johnson Brothers or whatever they're called, right? And they own that slot, and the show is just kind of you know, freewheeling about different home improvement right. projects, da, 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 da. But, you know, you, you get the idea. So my point is, is this show is act, was actually a slotted, you know, deal on sports or whatever the case is. And so the radio station nixed it and turned it into a local, just, it, it's just a podcast. Right. Now they have sponsors and it, you know, it's, it's pretty effective. So I, I guess what I'm saying is you, you've got a couple of options of, trying to backlink to them, um, yep. at least their, their website and just whatever the case is yep. um, and getting traffic that way and, or, uh, you know, obviously sponsorship, but there's, I think there's effective ways to niche, you know, niche those local podcasts down and backlinks to them that would, um, would make total sense uh, for your business. So you, you bring up a great point is so kind of like, okay, that was a radio show. Um, Actually, let me back up. So you got like a newspaper, a tangible, physical paper newspaper, uh, and then they have their online version. Uh, likewise, you'll have a, a, an online newspaper that just has no print version, right? So just kind of like the new, the new age version, if you will. Um, so what you're talking about is the radio equivalent. You know, this was an over the air station right. um, that, you know, maybe they have a, a message board, if you will, you can post on. Well, uh, also look for just podcasts that don't have an actual broadcast over the air uh, type of a show that's just more of a podcast based uh you could seek those out and see if they have any resources like this as well that is uh, yeah, cause perfect, you, perfect yeah because what you're seeing just is obviously newspaper is going away it's kind of sad but yep. um it's the truth and yep. basically you know the star tribune here in minneapolis was a huge you know business employing 500 to a thousand people yep. and it's down to maybe sub 100 right but within that are writers that have a following that have always had a following yep and those people are starting their own podcasts likewise with radio um radio's in the same position in some ways but you have characters that have been followed for 20 30 years right and the radio station itself literally can't support them and the only way that they can be supported is to have their own podcast which is supportable i mean it's a yep. very low overhead podcast is a inexpensive thing to produce and then but yet they've got this following so you know it's a very niche following for your market that you can somehow get a link to um it, you know it might work out i think that's a awesome example i think there's probably some um so you know we're talking you know a podcast probably that there's a parallel for you know youtube channels uh for people that are streaming that have some kind of a community and they're, they're a celebrity right. or a personality um, likewise, if there's social media, if there's people on Instagram or on Twitter uh, or Facebook, you know, that you're following that are also kind of more digital personalities, right? Instead of, um, you know, the other, the other old school or traditional stuff, uh, seek them out. I mean, any, anybody out there right now that basically has an audience um, is a great target to see if you can uh, find, their, find their website or find their social media or whatever kind of a portal they have and see, you know, if they're having some kind of a board you can get listed on or some kind of a page or directory you can get listed yeah. on. Um, and what we're after here on those, actually let me back up. I got sidetracked by your awesome example. Sorry. <laughs> um, in that same way, local businesses and groups. So um, it, it, we're talking about people that, that aren't, you know, again, big publications or over the air type stuff, you know, maybe your local restaurant or the school or, um, you know, chamber of commerce, whatever it is. Uh, are also going to have some of these resources. Um, at the end of the day, you know, we're talking about getting a backlink is the thing that we're really looking for here. So we're, we're, we're talking on the first part up how to find places to get listed, to get said backlink. Um, now let's, let's kind of dive into, so those are all the kind of the, the outlets. And if anybody out there, if, if you want to chime in and send us a message, if we missed something or you have something to add, uh, localseotactics.com, pick any of the different feedback forms or, or question forms we have and uh, any ideas would be, would be awesome to share if we missed anything. Um, but getting into the backlink, from what we've seen so far from doing this ourselves and uh, helping customers leverage this, um, 
each board, if you will, or each directory is going to be, you know, slightly different. So some of this might not apply to everything. Um, but here, generally speaking, are, are some of the things you're going to look at and, and how to take advantage of them uh, to really maximize, you know, the benefit here. Um, for the actual link itself, so usually you're going to list your business name, maybe your address, maybe your phone number, maybe an email, but almost always, at least you're listing your business name and your website link. So if you're a single location business, you're, you're just going to list your homepage, you know, for that website link, you know, the name of your business, you know, and then your homepage. If you're a multiple location business, see if you have the ability to submit for each location. You know, if you're, you know, store ABC in this town, you know, uh, list that. If your store, you know, in the next town, whatever it is, however many locations you have, try to put one in for each where it's relevant. Obviously, if one store is in Chicago, one is in LA, you're not going to post them both on the Chicago radio station. That's kind of silly. This is more of a, you know, a regional or a local business with multiple locations in the same uh, general area, the same Metroplex. Um, now with that, if you're a multi-location business, you should be having location pages for each of your locations. Um, you don't want to put all your links to your homepage. You want to spread that love out. So if you have multiple locations, when you list your business name uh, and then list the link to that locations page, you should have, you know, if it's, you know, bobsplumbing.com slash Minneapolis for the Minneapolis location and bobsplumbing.com slash St. Paul for the St. Paul location. Those are the pages you want to link to in those multi-location businesses. Um, one other quick tactic um, that may be effective for you is the name of your business. So these boards, the primary, <clears throat> readjust here in my makeshift office. Um, the primary focus, or I should say the primary reason for you doing this is just to get the backlink. Now, because we're talking about SEO here is, is the lens that we're looking through. Now these media outlets and the public at large, this is a value to just be listed so people can find you. You know, there's definitely a chance that, you know, I may visit, you know, a certain radio station or TV station to find a business that's open or to use this uh, directory that they're putting together as an actual resource. I'm, excuse me, I'm not giving for the conversation here. I'm not giving any credit to that. We're just not worried about that at all. We're only here talking about the value of this backlink. That being said, if there's a chance that you can be found by people just scanning and seeing these, these boards and directories, put some thought into the name of your business. Now I know if your business, you know, is, is Bob's plumbing, um, that that's what you should put up there. But in actually, in the, let's take that example. If, if your business is Bob's plumbing, and you put that as your business name, as people scan through the page, they'll see that you're a plumber because plumbing is in your name. Um, now, if Bob got like uber creative and his plumbing business wasn't called Bob's plumbing, it was just called, you know, Bob's, you know, water Bob stoppers works. or yeah, whatever. It didn't have like a descriptive name for right. plumbing. Um, I might suggest to you that you put your business name on this directory as Bob's Plumbing. That way, when people are scanning through, you have that keyword, if you will, of plumbing that they can see. Um, if it's just Jesse LLC, who knows what the hell that is? Right. You know, they're, right. they're not going to stop and pause on that. Again, my main purpose for um, encouraging you to get to listen to these directories isn't to be found in this scanning through a scenario. It's to get that backlink. So on one hand, you kind of don't have to worry about this, but um, it is something to think about. You're putting this on there. You're putting yourself out there. You might as well maybe, you know, keyword optimize your business name if you need to, uh, to kind of give people pause uh, so they can look at it or at least maybe write that down for later. So um, just a little, little tidbit there. And likewise, if you have a multi-location business, you know, if you throw five of them on there, if you want to you know, do dash city, you know, Bob's plumbing dash Minneapolis, Bob's plumbing dash St. Paul. Um, that's another trick that people are doing to just kind of stand out a little bit on those boards. But um, that is, that is a resource uh, that's available. That's a resource that probably won't be available down the road. Who knows how long this will last. Um, yeah. Backlinks are valuable and backlinks are uh, quite frankly expensive to get Bob, you know, uh, for our direct businesses that we have and also yeah. as for clients getting backlinks, uh, can be expensive either um, in labor time and resources um, to to actually negotiate um, and, and put that link on the page, even to find uh, businesses and organizations that are willing to do this. Um, you know, a lot of times people say, oh, sure, I'll give you a backlink. You know, you give me one back. Well, 
you know, Google doesn't like reciprocatory backlinks. They don't want to do that. This is a unique situation to just get a bunch of links pointing back to you with nothing on your end pointing back to them at all. And these high value domains, uh, I should have said this on the front side, but part of Google's algorithm isn't just getting a backlink from another website. The more trusted and recognizable and more authoritative the site that is linking to you is, the more value there is in that backlink. Um, you get the trust and the authority from them flowing to you through that link. You get that SEO juice. Radio stations, newspapers, TV stations, broadcast, I mean, these domains are high value and these would have been probably untouchable for you uh, before. Now they are just opening up the doors, just saying, you know, tell us who you are and we'll throw you on the website. Right. Um, and that's gonna be great, great for your business. There's a slight tweak in that, uh, depending on you know the actual website, not all of them will maybe uh, have it be an active link. Not all of them will pass that SEO juice. Don't worry about it. You can get dozens of links right now in the next day or two uh, in your own town that are gonna be great, um, not only for the domain value that you're getting the link juice passed from, but also these are local. Uh, let's take this example of Minneapolis here. If we're getting links from local TV and radio stations, Google knows they're local and in all their machine learning and all their AI, you know, they're not just saying, oh, these are just backlinks that these guys are getting. They're saying these are backlinks that are good quality, trusted domains. And hey, they're in Minneapolis, they're in Minneapolis. They give you that local geographic relevancy too, which is uh, huge right now, especially with uh, mobile and proximity. One of the trickiest parts about SEO is getting Google to recognize where you're at physically and kind of what your service area is. Um, that hyper local, the local SEO tactics here. Getting these types of backlinks is a great double dip in that you're getting the authority and that geographic relevancy all at the same time. And they're rolling out the red carpet for you to, to, to do these right now. So um, very, very valuable. Uh, take advantage and get yourself um, listed in as many of these as you can. You're not going to go wrong. So uh, Bob, did you have anything else to add on that topic? I know I just kind of ran with it there, but no, no, that's, I mean, that's, now's the time to strike, you know, on that and, and definitely pursue it. And cause it, it is difficult, you know, you, we're talking, you know, really getting backlinks is almost if anybody's in cold calling on a, on a yeah. hard, on a hard, uh, service you know, you can cold call all day to set one or two appointments and that's kind of backlinking and, and you got a cold call all week to get one home run type backlink yep. like this, like what you're talking about. So now's the time to do it, get it done. Cause who knows, you know, I'm sure it'll be effective for uh, years, you know, yep. so to speak. Um, and now's the time to get it done. So. And I should say on that too, resources wise, um, we talked in, in a previous episode about leveraging, you know, people on your team that might have some extra capacity right now if they're working from home. This is something a lot of us marketers or business owners, we wear a lot of hats, right? You got to delegate uh, to really get stuff done. This is something that's totally delegatable. You can, you can just tell an associate, hey, here's the concept. Listen to these guys' podcast. Go find all of these and get us listed and put together in a spreadsheet for me so I know where we're at, right. uh, what, what you got listed on and um, kind of get that proof. This is, this is not something that a high level person needs to do as long as they know your website and kind of what you're trying to do, you'd be in good shape. So, um, that's pretty much it for this week. Let me jump into our five star review of the week. If you haven't left us a review, we would love to hear from you. Go to local tactics.com, click on reviews and, uh, pick your favorite platform and leave us a review. Uh, lets us know the show is doing good and kind of hitting home for you and providing good value. And uh, we love reading them. So got a five-star review here from Evelyn Hernandez. And if you guys have, and gals have listened to the show for a while, you might recognize Evelyn's name. She was actually our first uh, person who called in and left a audio uh, question that we uh, played on the show a few episodes back. Uh, really, I think it was the last episode before we kind of did this pivot uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, we've received other uh, questions um, from more of you listeners here in the meantime. Uh, but right now, Evelyn's the only one that had left one. And uh, hopefully she's sporting her Intrix t-shirt that we sent her uh, for doing that. Um, and she was also kind enough to leave us a review. Um, so Evelyn, huge thanks on all fronts for this. Uh, Five-star review. Evelyn's short and sweet here. She says, great podcast and so easy to understand and implement for someone who is not techie. Quotes. 
uh, and appreciate it. Uh, when again, it's uh, awesome to hear you uh, on that first initial uh, question you asked, which was an awesome question. And uh, to get the five star review, um, really, really appreciate it. So uh, everybody else, love to hear from you. Um, Bob, do you have anything else you want to add? Otherwise, we'll wrap it up here. Nope, just uh, just sheltering in place and uh, looking forward to our <laughs> next podcast. Right on, right on. All right. Well, uh, thanks, Bob, for jumping on with me here. And thanks, everybody else, for tuning in. We'll uh, catch you next episode.